Welcome to Crazy Town's 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jonas. I'm TNT Don. I might take spells with one less. Start the timer. It has started. So uh, TNT, there's this. I, I read this story, and and I want to. I want to. I, I want to believe it's not real, but it is absolutely yeah. real because it's like court type stuff. There it is. So so there was this guy, Stephen Summers. He's 45. He he back in the. I don't know when the events happened, but he he was going through a divorce or his girlfriend. I'm not sure exactly. Broke into her house. Okay. Like basically like tied her up or something, assaulted her sexually, yada, yada. Yikes. She ended up pressing charges, of course. So this guy decides it would be a good idea to defend himself in court. Oh, no. Oh, and that's he, never a good idea. And then he literally plays, he records a video in the house during this going on. And he's like, so I'm in the house. I, I woke her up. I've been holding her against her will. Like, just basically made a confession video okay. about what he's doing. He's like, and I did and I did tie her up to keep her from contacting the authorities and give me enough time to get out of town. Oh. Oh. She's agreed to give me some time to say goodbye to the kids and leave, so I'm planning on that. Like, of course oh. she's going to agree to anything. Dude, you have her against her will. She would say yes to anything you were trying what to. But he hell? makes a video and then plays it in the flipping courtroom. Like, he thinks, like, she was all right with this, though. Yeah, I'm holding her against her will. But she's cool, like and like she's and there not was a hurt. She's safe. <laughs> dude, there I was, was a just picture making sure of she couldn't go where she wanted to go. And like the prosecutor on the other side sitting at the table, and she's just like mouth agape. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, it's the easiest money that 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 prosecuting lawyer ever made in their right. life. Right, dude. I was just like, I don't know how anyone who is not a lawyer. Thinks it's a good idea to go into a courtroom and I mean and and try and, to and defend, try to court it up. Try to defend yourself. <laughs> motherfucker motherfucker motherfucker. Dude watched too many movies, all right? He watched way too many movies. He's like, I'm gonna be the Lincoln lawyer. I'm Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, like he's watched too many episodes of Gotta Call Saul and he just thought he was just gonna get up there and he was gonna tug at their heartstrings like, look, I'm a good father. Um, yeah. well, I'm sure I held her against her will. I may have punched her once or twice. You know, she. I think at one point he did say she's okay. She just got some bruises though. Like, Ay, Dios dude. Mio, coño. And it reminds me. I was listening to a radio show the other day, and this guy called in and started going off about how he he got to go to has to go to jail for driving uh, his girlfriend, who was like, I didn't get it, but basically what happened was he said that she was she was they they were high. She starts falling asleep while she's driving. They're driving like 35 miles away. He he ends up somehow calling an ambulance for her, but he ends up driving her, but they arrest him because he doesn't have a license and he drove her. <laughs> and then he goes on to go like, blah, 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 blah. Well, I couldn't drive because I had a DUI and I've, this is my second time getting arrested. Da, da, da. But it's not my fault. I don't understand. And, and eventually the radio show host was like, dude, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news to you, but you guys were driving high for 35 miles and you have a history of driving drunk and driving without a license. No one's going to give two craps about your defense in any way, shape or form. And he was just like, oh, no, man, I guess maybe what you're saying. And he's just like, no, it doesn't matter. The circumstance, it wasn't like you drove her one minute. You drove her 30 miles while you were high without a license, and you're wondering why somebody's going to get you in trouble for that. <laughs> People sometimes just the perspective is just. Absolutely. You ever been to court, my man? Uh, when I was, when I was uh, under 18, I got, a, I got two speeding tickets, and uh, so I had to go to, like, juvie court for the second one because if you get two tickets before you're 18, you have to, like, go to the court to, like, talk about it, I guess, which it wasn't anything – uh, yeah, I've been I've been one time. It wasn't too serious when I went, but you know I did incur a fine. I guess <laughs> I got a fine. Mm -hmm. it was, I uh, uh, I had to go and testify one time because I caught a guy stealing when I worked at Blockbuster. Oh, did you? And uh, they called me as a witness because did you I was get like, up there and snitch. I mean, I just went and they said, "Do you see the guy in here that stole?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> like wow. that was. I mean, they got. I mean, I had to. I like, actually got like wow. whatever it summons to the court. You straight snitched. I guess, dude. You should have been like, I don't know what you're doing. He wasn't my homie. He was stealing from my goddamn store. I was about it's to get not fired your store. My theft, dude. It is not your store. I was the general manager. I was responsible. I was the general manager! 
<laughs> I was I was responsible for the for the <laughs> I was responsible for all that churn, dude. Like, it, yeah, no, my, uh, I felt it, dude. Don't worry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were the general manager. I'm the general manager, <laughs> sir. This is my territory. I'm protecting my house, dog. Because, because God knows that that man stealing something from your freaking blockbuster had any change on your on your paycheck. Oh, I got in trouble, dude. Trust me, he stole you got a lot. In trouble? He, dude, it was funny. He would always come in and steal when I wasn't working. He would come in like in the evening and on Friday and Saturday night when I was off. Okay. And, the, and then, so I came in, I was like, I came in to work, caught him that day. He came in, caught him. And I was all like, right. y'all are, you all suck. I'm oh, like, yeah. I worked one day at night and caught this guy. Well, Joe, did you, you strike me as a power snitch too. You probably, did you ever snitch on your own coworkers? No. I'm, and by snitch, I mean, did you ever be like, hey, uh, I got to report you or write you up? No, I'm not. I'm not a huge stickler, man. Even because I've been a manager at different different points, like I'm not a huge stickler. Have you have you had to snitch on anybody at your job lately? I've definitely look. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, Jonas. I've definitely had to snitch in my a bunch of um, times. Well, now I I mean I have a new role. I'm now a supervisor at work. And that's so, what I'm so, saying. So I, I mean I haven't had to snitch, but like I have to address things, right? Like like <laughs> it will. And the problem is the the area that I work is is pro is a is almost it's basically called process. So our mm -hmm. job is to mm -hmm. and like help people follow the proper process. So it's like, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to do that all the time. It, it's tough being in a supervisory role. I can recall one time where I was working and I had a quote unquote subordinate or whatever, and the young lady was like, "I'm going on a break," and I was like, "All right." And this chick was gone for an hour. You could get a 30 minute lunch break. You gone for an hour and a half and people I'm looking for you. So yeah, I went and I, I went and I was like, Hey, yo, she's been gone for way too long. I don't know where she's at, but she's been gone for a long time. Her lights, this is happening. She's got a, she's got things she has to handle here and it's not getting done. Cause she's not here. I straight snitched and they ended up moving her away from the, well, that's the area. It I work. you, man. Yeah. Plus, it's like, yo, she was just rude, and I was just like, look, I had no problem switching because she was trash. Yeah, anyway, yeah. But. Well, it, even in the job I had before this one at my real job, I mean, we run into a lot of things where we we use other people's work product to then disperse to other people. Mm -hmm. So we find stuff constantly that isn't set up right. Like, so it's like I we have to reach out and copy their boss and be like, hey, this wasn't done right. Like, hey, can you resubmit this? You know, so we have to do that constantly. Yeah, there's you get trapped in the snitching sometimes. But for the most part, like if a person goes on a lunch break or whatever and, and like they come back, if you come back 10 minutes late, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm oh, not going to snitch. I catch you sleeping on a job. Yo, get that rest because I've been there, you know? I'm right, not, right. I'm, I am a more pa abu pattern abuser than I'll say. So. You know, like you log on late to work. I'm not going to be like, I got to write you up because you were 10 minutes late. But, <laughs> but you're 10 minutes late fucking all the time. Like, eventually, there's going to be that conversation like, hey, I let a couple of these slide, but now you're doing it three times a week. Like, I you know. Can't. But then you look like you look like a power snitch right there. No, but there. they know. Dude, you they know. know. Like, they do know. They especially know. when you're dealing with, like, younger kids. They know. Yeah. Well, luckily, in they're the job, they're most away people with. are 30 or older. So, it's like, most people are grown. They know. It's like, they ha it's their job. Yeah. It ain't like a kid who's just, it's just, they're working to make money. Yeah. So, most people know they don't want to get fired because. <laughs> but nah, man, All I right, am not, so, a, John, I am so not I, a micromanager. I am a. I'm farthest from it, man. If you see somebody selling drugs, Jonas, what do <laughs> Where, you do? I mean, like what do downtown. You, what if you What if you walk in on a coworker selling drugs to another coworker? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> what is this an after school special? No, answer your question. <laughs> what would I you guess, do? I mean, I guess it depends. Like, I'm not even in the office, so I don't know. Oh, they're, yeah, yeah. they're on a video chat, it's, and they're like, hey, you guys. It's a hypothetical situation. Uh, hypothetical. How do I know they're drugs? You do. You know. I, I do. You just know. I mean, if I see something that's super unethical, yeah, man. I, what I mean, do you mean unethical? Selling drugs is unethical at work. You're going to snitch on somebody for selling drugs. <laughs> at work? If I'm the boss? Uh, no, hold if I, on. That'd be like if you catch your subordinate stealing, you're not supposed not to say anything first time, let it go? It's not. It's not my problem. It is if you're the boss. It is not my problem. I don't know where you're getting this. It is my problem because I'm the boss. No, it is not. Because if they find out that you know, then you get fired. But I don't know. You you just said you caught them, so you do know. But I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, but it can come back. 
I feel like my life is in danger if I were to say something. This person's a drug dealer. <laughs> I don't make enemies out of drug dealers. I, mean, I didn't see anything. Yeah. I, okay. I, That's I mean, my this defense. Ain't, this ain't the streets. It ain't like I'm like. Yes, it I'm is. Like, yes, sir. No, I didn't see anything, sir. There yes, was nothing it, out here. Jo I, I'm sorry to break it to you, Jonas. Everywhere is the streets. Every Everywhere is the streets. Everywhere is the streets because everywhere in this country people can get a gun and everywhere in this in this country guns shoot bullets and then every bullet <laughs> could Rips kill through you. my organs. Yeah, I'm good. So I'm not taking Come that chance. Come and shoot you like, this is what you get for telling me selling weed to work. <laughs> I've definitely now this is like way younger and I've definitely known people to steal from a business that I've worked at um, and I will just be like. Yo, you just better be careful, man. Don't get caught. And they always end up getting caught anyway. Yeah, exactly. Or somebody else will snitch on them. But me myself, I am not gonna I'm not gonna snitch on you. I'm not gonna tell. As long as you're not stealing from me. You're not stealing from you start yeah. stealing from me, then we got a problem. But if you're the manager of the whole company and they're affecting the bottom line, they are stealing from you. Because if you get a bonus based on your profit and they're stealing stuff, that takes away from your profit, which takes away from your bonus. So they are stealing from you directly. What are, are you? This, what is this trickle down economics? What are you, freaking Reagan? I'm just saying. Are you a Kennedy? You said or something? if it affects you directly, and if they're affecting your profit and affecting your bonus, that affects you directly. How does it affect my pro my profit? I don't understand if they're where you get that. Pro products from your store. Do you get paid on commission? No, but so say you run a store, and your bonus is based on your profitability. And people are stealing products from you that directly takes away from your profitability, which directly affects your bonus if enough people are doing it for a longer period of time. I mean, yeah. I, I, okay. I, I see where you're going. Yeah. You're saying is that if my employer loses money, which is what you're saying, is my employer loses money, then he's not going to be able to issue raises. He's not going to be able to give me a 50 cent raise at the end of no, the no, year. No. He's going to only give me no. a, a 35 no, no. cent raise. I, I, we're out of time. So I'll, I'll, no, what I mean is sometimes if you, if you were the head person of a business, at the end of the year, you, you can get bonuses based on how much profit your business makes. I mean, I get that. But like, so it's not a matter of 50 cents an hour. It's a matter of like, you might get a $10,000 bonus if you're X percent profitable. And if they, and, and if they and, steal enough, and, you might only be 9% profitable. And then you only get a $5,000 bonus. And, and, you, and you, and you think that if I, I walk in and I catch Ed, um, Edwin stealing pens out of the supply cabinet and taking paper towels and putting them into the back of his car. It's I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna right? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lose out on a bunch of money. Right, right. Nancy's now, if you're stealing a company car, yes. Right, yeah, Nancy's stealing okay. post-it notes, or or you work at Best Buy, and Nancy's stealing TVs. Yeah, two yeah. totally different stories. If you try to put the whole Xerox machine into the back of your your F-150, yeah, we got an issue. Right, right. Yeah, but, I'm not be mad if you take home some post-its or some pens. I mean, I think everyone has done that at some point. Take a stapler. <laughs> or whatever you know what I mean? i'm not i'm not admitting anything no i mean like no but like it's just in in places i've worked i've seen people do that my old boss all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff not mm -hmm. you know that the, the office supply thing that was like on the office he, he like tried to fire pam she's like he's like i've seen you take post notes <laughs> <laughs> i've seen you take post notes. anyways that's all time we have for this episode go to the crazy for jonas yeah, oh yeah